A European payload called SPAS, or Shuttle Pallet Satellite, provided these magnificent views. It's a unique reusable space platform built by a West German aerospace company. In addition to having film and TV cameras mounted on SPAS, 10 experiments belonging to the West German government, the European Space Agency and NASA were on the platform. The test for SPAS was to prove the satellite's design validity and that experiments could be operated successfully while SPAS was free flying. NASA wanted to show that the remote manipulator system could handle the two and a half ton payload. The orbiter's ability to station keep with SPAS was also demonstrated. At this point, they are 1,000 feet apart. Here, SPAS and the shuttle are 200 feet apart. Thrusters on board the shuttle were fired to record the effect on SPAS. Finally, SPAS is rebirthed for return to Earth. The shuttle crew also deployed two communication satellites, a Canadian satellite for pay TV operations and an Indonesian satellite to help with telecommunication services to the island's many remote locations. Shuttle Flight 7 was to be the first shuttle flight to touch down at the Kennedy Space Center, but bad weather conditions did not allow it. Challenger landed instead at Edwards Air Force Base in California, the pre-designated alternate landing site. During the period of communications blackout, usually lasting about 15 minutes, temperatures on the vehicle's surface reached their peak. The temperature of the red-hot glow seen through Challenger's front windows was about 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. One astronaut described the view as being inside a furnace.